In this Photoshop design tutorial, we're going to design an amazing woodwork logo in Photoshop. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I want to show you guys how to create this simple but amazing woodwork logo in Photoshop. Now guys, this is not out of this world, it's super easy to create and we're only going to work with a bit of lines and three different fonts and I'm also going to show you guys a bit in depth how to create this awesome background. Now guys, as well, this looks simple but you can create so much more out of this. Take some inspiration from my design and create something really unique. If you guys will have a look here under my design layer one, if I'm gonna turn that off, you guys can see that I took these elements, changed them around a little bit and created something completely different with this. So this is called Cycle House Los Angeles, a little bit of a bicycle there again with another font, two different fonts again with Cycle House in Los Angeles and the two lines again. So play a little bit with these two designs, think about it and you guys can also create something really unique and simple. So it shouldn't be too complicated to create this. Okay great, enough about the talking, let's get into the tutorial. So first of all I'm going to turn off design 1 and 2 here, actually just design 2 and I want to start right away out and just run you guys through quickly the background. So first of all just created a dark layer again over here then I have my image again from the web, then a selective color, a color fill on top, a little bit of some filters, and then the complete logo on top. So let's start doing that from scratch. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to the top to design one, and first of all, all the way down, create a new layer from down here, and we're gonna move that to the top so it's not in that group, and just right here, black. Maybe, yeah, just black, so we know it's the black background. Again, I'm going to take the marking tool from the left-hand side here, rectangular marking tool, and I'm going to make a complete selection around the canvas. And also, if you are completely new to canvas sizes, have a look on the channel. I've created, again, a few tutorials teaching you how to create canvas sizes and stuff. Okay, so you made a selection. I'm going to hit right-click and say Fill. I'm going to go under Content, select Black, hit OK, and we have a black background. Command D, get out of the selection. Now I'm working with a Mac. If you are working with a Windows PC, please press Control when I say Command. So again, Control when I say Command. Okay, so Command D, get out of the selection. And now what I did is actually I'm going to copy this layer here. So again, Command J, move that all the way to the top. And this layer is still adjusted and everything. What I first of all need to do is just make the opacity all the way up, hit right click and say rasterize layer. So that's basically how I got this layer now from the web. I'm going to write here quickly background while I run you through this. So a lot of people actually ask me where the hell do I get these images from. So again there's uh, graphicstock.com and as well on Google I find a lot of these images. So again just googled again forest, green forest or something and found this image, dragged it into Photoshop and now for the first step that I want to do is actually give this a bit of a blur. So again, I'm going to hit right click on this layer, say convert to smart object over here, because now I can control my filter a little bit better. So now you guys can see it has a little bit of an icon here, so this means it's now a smart object. Again, I'm going to head all the way to the top here, under filters, we're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur and under Gaussian blur we can now adjust this but you can just adjust it really quickly and don't think so much about it so that's what I normally do 2.8 3 or 4 I'm gonna hit OK keep on designing and then maybe half an hour later I think the Gaussian blur is just a little bit too much so then it's super easy because it's a smart object I can literally just go onto the smart filters here double click on Gaussian blur and I get back into the Gaussian blur filter and now I can tweak it again. So that's why it's so cool to just give it a quick tweak and then afterwards you can refine it a little bit. Great, so a little bit of a lesson in between. Uh, 2.5, okay, so we gotta blur the background. I'm gonna just minimize this a little bit. And now for the next step, I wanted to just adjust these colors a little bit. For me, it's a bit too green and also I want the logo to stand out a bit more. So I wanna decrease again the opacity of this layer. Again, we have background here. I don't know why it didn't change that. Okay, first of all, background layer, take it down the opacity all the way to 41 or 51, and that's why I also have a black layer underneath, so it just gets dark really easy. We don't need to take and create another adjustment layer with curves. Also, if I'm going to press Command I, you will see it turns white, and this makes the whole layer look different again if you want to create a black logo. So you can also work with white layers in the background. 
Okay, Command I, I'm just switching that back again. So the background layer, that's all set. Next step, we're going to go back to the adjustments here. We're going to go to the selective color. And then in our neutral tones here under color, we're going to work on neutrals. And first of all, I'm going to play a little bit with the cyans here. So taking them down a bit, maybe to like a minus 27, 28, that looks okay. Then also magentas up a little bit, plus four, five, let's have a look. Yeah, plus five, that's fine. And yellow's also a little bit up, plus seven or so. Just a little, little tweak there. Again, also the gray tower, black tones. Let's have a look. We can still obviously play with this a little bit later. Like a plus one, that's fine for me. Okay, back to adjustments. You guys can see we have all our settings here. I'm actually going to turn this off because it's a bit irritating here. So we have adjusted this a bit with color. Okay, but I think it still needs a bit more reddish brown in there. So I'm going to go all the way down to the adjustment layers and select solid color. Great, under solid color, let's stick with yellow quickly. I'm going to hit OK. And first of all, adjust this layer now. Very important. Again, I'm going to go to the blending options. Go and switch those to color. So only the color are shining or is coming through. I'm going to go and change the opacity to something like 12 to 15. That's normally where I play with. 15, that's OK. And you guys can see it's a bit more yellowish. What I want to do now is double click again back onto the color here. And we're going to select a red color. And you guys can already see the effect here on the right side. Just to make this a bit more brownish. Okay, this is just, this is literally playing around and finding your own little taste there. This is totally up to you as well. I'm going to hit OK. And yeah, just a bit more brown here as you guys can see before and after, before and after. So this is my taste. Play a little bit with what you want. Now, next step that I want to do is turn off every layer that you have turned on. And you're literally just going to select the color here, the adjustment layers, and the background layer, and the black layer. Now you're going to head back to the top, and you're going to hit and press the master shortcut from Photoshop now. So again, Command, Alt, Shift, and I. Command, Alt, Shift, and I. All together, merging all the layers to one final layer. Now, why did I do this? Because I want to create a flare on top of this layer now. Okay, so I've got the layer selected. I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go all the way down to Red Giant Software and Knoll Light Factory. Now, I'm going to stop right here. Guys, this plugin is not in your Photoshop or this filter is not in your standard Photoshop. You need to get this plugin. It's an external plugin from a company called Red Giant Software. You have to purchase Knoll Light Factory and then you have to integrate it into your Photoshop. So once you hit it, you will be actually having this plugin. Great, so in this plugin you will find tons of awesome filters and flares and really great stuff. So again on the left hand side under my presets I'm going to select here the Sunny D which I've already selected and already played a little bit with this. Again over here on the brightness I've just changed this a bit, something like 106 or so. And on the right hand side under elements of light I turned off the disk here. And also the glow, I kept that on. I like the glow and the poly spread here as well. So it looks like a sunset around there or something. It just adds a cool touch. So again, poly spread is on. I'm going to hit OK. And we have our new logo now, or actually new background coming up. Boom. And as you guys can see, that just gives the whole background a complete new element. Great. So that's all for the background. That's how I did it. Again, I'm going to hold Shift, select all of these layers here, press Command G. Again, us Windows people, please press Control. So Command G, put it together in a group, and I'm going to write here background again, so you have everything nice and sorted in case you're going to go come back in a few months and you need to adjust things. Okay, so let's actually focus on the design that we wanted to create. So first of all, I'm going to go back to View, New Guides as every week. I'm going to select Horizontally and 50% and just create a nice guideline in the center there. Again, view, new guide, and again, vertically as well, 50% to create the center, and so we know exactly where what is. Again, I'm gonna take the text tool via the keyboard. I'm just pressing T, or select the text tool over here. I'm gonna make a nice big selection. And first of all, I'm gonna write now my main name from the brand, or whatever, which is today, Woodwork. So I'm going to write all of that in capital letters. And you guys can't see it at the moment because the font has changed, the color has changed. Let's also work on that. So I've selected everything with Command A. 
Again, I'm going to go to the top. First of all, select the color, which is supposed to be white. Okay. And then as well, we're going to select the right font for that. So that's something like Cassette or something. Because Nat, you guys can also find that again in the description down below. Just have a look. I've added all for you. So again, Cassette, Cassette, bold. Okay. So that is the text. And again, I want to play a little bit with the tracking. I can see the tracking is way out of order. So again, on the right hand side, I have a character box here. If you guys don't have that, please go to Window and select Character Box over here. Great. In the Character Box, I'm going to go to Tracking and move that all the way down, maybe to like 300, 200, 300. That's actually okay. 300. There we go. Great. So the spacing is really nice, the tracking. I'm going to accept that, take the Move tool here and just literally move that a little bit into the center. Okay. Maybe it's still a little bit too big. Let's have a look here. Yeah, it's way too big for me. So I'm going to switch this to maybe something like 30, 38, 39 pixels. Yeah, that looks better. 38 pixels. Okay, take the move tool again. Let's move that back into the center. You guys can also use the cursors again. Great, next step that I want to do is maybe create two guidelines here again from the top. This is obviously me just doing it quickly and playing. If you want, you can calculate it a little bit better here on the left hand side, um, just to have the spacing evenly. Again, I'm going to take a guideline from the top and just place it over here. Great. So what I'm going to do is take again the marking tool here and also going to create a new layer. So go the, all the way down, create a new layer here. And that will be our line. Okay. And marking tool still selected. Now I'm going to start somewhere around the W and just make a rough selection here and stop around the K. Okay. And yeah, like this. Okay. And we've created a nice selection there. I'm going to go inside of the selection, hit right click and say fill again. I'm going to fill that up with white color. Okay. And I'm going to press command D to get out of the selection. Well, actually, no, we're going to st skip this step. Don't press command D. We're going to press Z, zoom in a little bit. Okay. And press M on the keyboard to take the marking tool again. And now we can move the selection again. So I'm going to move the selection up a little bit and I literally just want to delete a little bit of this whole bulky line here because it's just a little bit too thick. So I think halfway, I'm going to hit delete and just delete it. Now I'm going to press command D, get out of the selection. Wait one second. Again, left and right. Just have a look that you're completely deleting everything. Now command D out of the selection. And this is now the thickness of the line. Maybe it's still a little bit, a little bit too thick, but we can still tweak that in the end. It's obviously a tutorial. I'm doing stuff quite quickly here. Take a bit more time when you do these things. Okay, again, I'm going to go to line here and just also duplicate this with command J. Take the move tool and I'm going to move that all the way down to the bottom here. Okay, and maybe place that over here again with the cursors. And I'm happy so far. Again, I'm going to take this guy, just move it out. Just simply go onto the guide, hold with the mouse and just drag it out. Again, the center as well. And now last next step actually that I'm going to do is take the text tool again, make a selection over here and I'm going to create the tree that we have. So you can either use brushes for this, you can use shapes, vector shapes, or again, you can also use fonts. Most of these fonts, you can also find them on the font.com. So have a look there as well. So next font that I want to create is basically the tree. I'm going to write E here on the keyboard because I know this will be now, or I, sorry. And I'm going to create now the tree. So this is the new font, which is called again, such a weird name, something with S. I need to find it here. There we go. Subidoka tree beta. Subikota tree beta. Okay, you guys can also find that in the description. Don't worry about that. I'm going to select it. And right away, you guys can see that with this capital I, you actually have the tree font. Okay, so again, I'm going to change the size here of the pixels, maybe something around 50, 45. Yeah, that's okay. So the pixel height, I'm going to accept it. And also take the move tool. And again, move that here into the center. Okay, and that's going to be our tree now. So you guys can obviously play with this, try, w take whatever you want, shapes, whatever you need. Okay, so at the bottom, you guys can see the roots are shining through, which are a bit irritating. I want to remove those. So it's super simple. What we can actually do is just head over here to the right hand side 
and take this text type layer and rasterize it to a normal layer. So literally just hit right click, say rasterize type, and now it's a complete normal layer and you can raise stuff, you can add things to it, whatever you want. I'm going to take the marking tool again, make a selection here and just hit delete, command D, get out of the selection and it's now deleted. Great. So it looks a little bit more slicker and good. Great. So for the last step, again, I want to put in a slogan, trademark, something like that at the bottom. So again, text tool over here. Select the text, so I'm going to make a selection and we're going to write here maybe your slogan, your company name, your country name, whatever you have. I'm going to write trademark today. Okay, select all of it. You guys can't see it again because it's way too big. So first of all, I want to change the size maybe to like 8 pixels and it's just trees <laughs> because we still have the tree font selected. So what I'm going to do is select the right font and for this we're going to use, I think, Helvetica Neue again because it's a nice thin font and it's very elegant. Okay, so th thin no man. Okay, thin font over here. Trademark, I maybe want to space that a little bit more, so give that a way higher tracking than before. Again, let's go over here to the tracking and I'm going to give that around 640. Yeah, 640 is actually good. Okay, and pixels 8, that's good. Accept it. Move tool. And I'm literally, you can now either place it over here. I want to now place it right in the center here. Okay. So again, now we're going to head back to a line copy here. We can also rename that again, line 2, which is obviously at the bottom, as you guys remember. Okay, I'm going to take the marking tool and just make a rough selection over here. You guys can also be accurate again with guidelines if you want to. I'm doing this a bit quicker. And I'm literally just going to hit delete here. And let's have a look. Maybe we can actually take a bit more space left and right. So it just looks like there's a bit more room. Okay, and always try to have a look that your design is also not as balanced and looks evenly. Okay, so again, deleted that a bit. Take the guideline here. We can actually just remove it. I'm going to go to filter, say clear guides. Okay, that's out already. Great, so as you guys can see, super quick creating this woodwork trademark logo here in Photoshop. Nothing out of this world, just a few simple fonts and lines again. I'm going to also quickly go back here to our folders and just select woodwork, line 2, line these all, press command G again, write logo, okay, and select background as well with shift, command G again, and we're going to write here maybe final design, so we all know that's our design. Great, so there you go again, let's have a look quickly from our before and after, so this is the before and after, before and after. You guys can see that I actually just patched out this little strip here from the background, which is maybe another tutorial again, but yeah. As you guys can see, super simple creating a woodwork logo in Photoshop is not too complicated. Yeah, so that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks again for watching. If you like this, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up there. Share it with all your buddies who are new to Photoshop. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.